All right, here we go. So we are going to do, should have had this ready. We're going to do section R5 again, and we'll call this part two. All right. And let me get my pen working here. There we go. All right. So we're going to still do factoring. So what we've done the last couple of days, <coughs> excuse me, what we've done the last couple of days is um, uh, like the special kind of factoring. Okay, this this one, I don't know if there's a name for it. It's just factoring polynomials. It, it's actually factoring a trinomial, and it's um, it's factoring a trinomial with the lead coefficient of one. So I'll show you what that means. Okay, basically it means this. If I have this, it's supposed to be a B. Let's try that again. It'll look a little nicer. Okay, BX plus C. So basically, if you have something that looks like this, but this A right here is equal to 1, that's what we're doing today. The next time we do a lesson, probably Monday, I guess, um, what we're going to do is do a lead coefficient with something other than 1, okay? It'll be an integer that's bigger than 1, all right? That's a little bit more complicated. This style right here is a little bit easier. So the A is going to be a 1. So basically, it's going to look like this, all right? So the B and the C will be numbers, okay? They're not going to be letters, okay? They'll be a B and a C. So you have an X squared plus something X plus some numbers. So that's what we're going to do today, all right? So let's take a look at it. Let's take a look at the very first one. Uh, actually, before we do that, let's do this. Um, uh, let's just do. Let's just do the example. All right. So this is example. If you look in the book, it's actually example nine because it's a continuation of R five. So let's take a look. So write this down. So it's x squared plus 7x plus 10. And you may remember this. You probably did this in Algebra 1, actually. Um, I'm sure you did it in Algebra 2 for sure. All right, but we're going to do it again from here. I'm not going to assume that you know how to do this already. I'm just going to teach this from scratch, okay? So if I want to factor this, and I should say factor right up at the top. It says factor completely. I'm just going to write the word factor just so I don't have to write all that completely every single time. So what I want to do is I want to factor this. Thank you. So what do I want it to look like? Well, I want it to look like this. I want two things that are multiplied together to equal this thing right here. That's what we do when we factor. We talked about that yesterday. I want to find out what times what equals x squared plus 7x plus 10. And there's a little bit of a trick to it. Kind of a trick. It's not really a trick. It's just how you do it. All right. So factoring a trinomial is kind of like backwards FOIL method. Remember FOIL method, right? First, outside, inside, last. Okay. So this is basically starting with the answer and we're kind of coming up with the question, if you want to think of it that way. Does that make any sense? All right. So We've done that before. We've done the FOIL method, and we came up with an answer that looked very much like this. All right, so that was the, the beginning part of, um, I don't know, it was, I forget what section it was, R4 or something like that. So we did that stuff. Now we got this answer right here, if you want to call it that, and we're going to try to figure out what times what is equal to this. That's what we're doing when we're trying to factor. So if, like, I don't know what's going to go here and here, but this first one times this first one has to equal what? up here. Like if I did a FOIL method, this times this, and this is my answer, what would be right here and right here? An X, right, because first, right, remember first outside and inside last. So if I go to the first, this times this, it has to equal X squared. So what times what equals X squared? X times X. Does that make sense? All right. Let's look at the signs. Now everything's positive, so what do you think the signs in here are going to be? They're going to be positive, right? Now, looking at this plus 10, this possibly, it's not on this one, but it possibly could be both negative because what's a negative times a negative? It's a positive. But is there any way that I can add two negatives and get a positive out of it? No. 
So I have to have two positives. Does that make sense? So look at the signs first. That's what I do. I put the signs in here first. Then I figure out what times what is the first one. And then I got to figure out what times what is the last one. But the problem is you've got a couple choices. So what times what is equal to 10? Somebody give me a number or two numbers. What times what's equal to 10? Two and five. Very good. Okay. So two times five is 10, right? So that's true. What else multiplied together could be equal to 10? 10 times one, right? Would you agree? Yeah. So I could put a 10 and a one here. I could, and um, I got to figure out which one am I going to use? Am I going to use five times two? which is 10, or am I going to use 10 times 1, which is 10? So Cameron's already on to this. He's seen this before, okay? So what has to happen, though, do you remember when we did the FOIL method? The outside and the inside, what had, to, what had to happen to the outside and the inside? They had to add up to be this middle term right here. So here's what you have to think. This times this has to multiply by 10, all right? And this times this has to add up to what? To 7. So what you have to do is you have to mentally think what times what is equal to 10, and those same two numbers have to add up to be 7. All right? So does 10 times 1 work? No, because 10 times 1 does equal 10. That's true. But if I add 10 and 1, what do I get? I get 11, and this is not an 11. So Cameron already said it, but let's say it. So what's going to be here and what's going to be here? 5 and 2, right. Or 2 and 5. It doesn't matter. In this particular case, does it matter that the 2 goes first and the 5 goes next? It does not matter, okay? All right. So let's check it to see if it actually works. Let's do a FOIL method and see if this works. So I'm just going to check. You don't have to do this. But um, I'm doing it for the first one just to see if it works. So if I do the FOIL, first outside, inside, last. So x times x is x squared. And then the outside is plus 2x. The inside is plus 5x. And then the last is 5 times 2, which is 10. Simplify it. x squared plus 7x plus 10. Does it work? Yeah, absolutely, it works. So this, um, or this thing right here, equals all that stuff right there. All right, and there we go. So that's how you factor these. These are called factoring trinomials with a lead coefficient of 1. That's a mouthful, but that's what it is. So when you have a 1 in front of the x squared, that's basically what you do here. It's a little more complicated when this is not a 1. Okay, if this was like a 3 or a 5 or a 7 or something like that, it'd be a lot more complicated. Okay, but for right now, we're just going to learn how to factor these things with a lead coefficient that means that number in front of the x squared, the lead coefficient is just a 1. All right, so it's important when you do your homework problems, because on a test, I may not say factor this using the difference of two squares. Factor this using um, the sum of two cubes. Factor the perfect square. I probably won't say that. All I'll say is factor. I'll probably put completely after it. I'll just say factor completely. And you have to look at it, and you have to recognize which type of factoring is it. All right, so you've got to keep these things straight. Like I said the other day, this is something, if I remember right, like in either Algebra 1 or Algebra 2, this is something that they would teach you how to do first. Then after they teach you how to do this, then they teach you how to do those special factorings. But in this book, they went the other way around. And I think I kind of like the way this book is doing it because I think the special factoring is a little bit easier. All right, enough of that. Let's do another example. So that's all we're going to do the rest of the time. We're going to do about two, three more examples, and that will be it. So let's do one more, and then I'll show you a couple, and I'll let you try them on your own, and then we'll go over it together. So here's one that we'll do together. So again, it says factor. I forgot to write factor right there. So it says factor completely is what it says. I'll just write factor, and that's an 8. So x squared minus 6x plus 8. Did you write that down? So first thing we're going to do is recognize it's a trinomial with a lead coefficient of 1. So I'm going to put two sets of parentheses being multiplied together. And we've got to figure out what times what is equal to x squared minus 6x plus 8. 
All right, well, first thing I'm going to do, I mean, you could put the x's in here because you know you're going to have an x and an x. That's easy. But let's do the signs first. Remember, the last terms have to multiply to be a positive 8. So what type of numbers multiply to be, what, if I have two numbers and they multiply to be a positive answer, what signs would those numbers be? They could, a negative and a positive? Right, they could be a negative and negative, or they could be a positive and a positive. Correct? All right, but you have to think. Do I just automatically put plus and plus here? No, because these have to add up to what? A negative number, right? So can I get two positive numbers to add up to a negative number? No, I can't. So what do you think my signs are going to be? Negative and negative. That's the first thing that I do on these, okay? I don't even think about what numbers are going to go in there. Okay, first thing I do, I don't even put the X's there. I figure out what my signs are going to be, all right? If this last one right here is positive, you have two choices. They're either going to be both negative or they're going to be both positive. How do I know which one? Then I look at this sign. If this sign is negative, then I know these have to both be negative. They can't be both positive. Does that help a little bit? All right, let's take a look. Let's do the first thing. Remember, first outside, inside, last. What's this times this going to be? It's going to be x and x, okay, which is x squared. And now you have to think of some numbers that multiply to be positive 8. All right, so let's just do this. I'm going to put a and b. So they have to multiply to be a positive 8, and they have to add up to be what? Well, they have to add up to be what? Negative 6. Okay, so you have to think of two numbers that multiply to be 8 and they add up to be negative 6. So like, this is, this is kind of like, this is my brain, all right? There's my brain right there, all right? This is what's going on inside my head, all right? I think, I got to think, what times what is 8? And if I add those same two numbers up, I get negative 6. Well, you got 8 and 1, but is there any way you can get 8 and 1 to add up to be a negative 6? No, all right? What's my other choice? 4 and 2, okay, but, um, well, not but anything, okay, because they're both going to be the same sign. So I got a 4 and a 2. So 4 times 2, right, or I should say negative 4 and negative 2 is positive 8, and negative 4 plus negative 2 is, posit is negative 6. Does that work? Sure. Negative 4, I'll put it in parentheses, times negative 2 is positive 8, and negative 4 plus negative 2, that's equal to negative 6. So those are my choices. These answers have been pretty easy so far. Sometimes the numbers are going to be a little bit bigger and you're going to have a lot more choices. Like with 8, you only have one choice, don't you? Or two choices. 8 and 1 and 4 and 2. That's it. All right? So it's 4 and 2. It doesn't matter which one is the 4, which one is the 2, because negative 4 plus negative 2 is negative 6. Negative 2 plus negative 4 is negative 6. It doesn't matter. They both multiply to be positive 8, and that's your answer right there. So we had this question yesterday. Do you really have to show any work on this? Not really. Okay, on these, you can just kind of do that in your head. If you want, you could always jot your possibilities down over your, here off to the side. But really, just from here to here is all you need. Let's do another example. Is this coming back to you? Back from Algebra 2? At least Algebra 2? Okay, so example 11. So it's x squared, write, write this down, x squared minus x minus 12. And again, we're going to factor. I'll give you a minute to, to work on that. Okay? So let's try it on your own. See if you can get it. So you should be putting this in your notes. So it's x squared minus x minus 12. This is in the book, by the way, if you want to look. It's, it's example 11. I don't know what page. It's R5. Look at section R5, example 11. So this is the first thing you should have done. Put your two sets of parentheses. And then I would put the signs in there. Now this is a little bit different than the two we've done so far. The ones we've done so far, that last term has been positive. So they've either both been positive or they've both been negative. But on this one, that last term is negative. So think of the last terms. This times this has to equal a negative. So that means one number has to be what? Talking positive. The other has to be 
negative, okay? And it doesn't matter where you put it. I'm just going to put the positive first and the negative second. This is how I like to do it. If you don't like to do it like that, if you just want to do the whole thing in your head, that's fine. But I like to put the signs first. What's the next easiest thing that I should put? The x and the x, yeah? And now I just got to figure out what two numbers multiply together. Again, this is just going on in my head. What two numbers multiply together to be what? Negative 12. Not just 12, but negative 12. And then if I take those same two numbers and add them up, what do they need to add up to be? Negative 1. Where'd you get the 1 from? Right. It's the coefficient, right? It's the number that's out in front. We call it the coefficient. So the coefficient of negative x is negative 1. So they have to add up to negative 1. So what we have to do is we have to figure out in our head what times what's equal to 12. Now you have a couple more choices for this, don't you? Let's go through them. We got 12 times 1. Is there any way if I add 12 and 1, 1 being positive, 1 being negative, can I get a negative 1? Out of 12 and 1? No, I can't. What about, what's the next one? 6 and 2. Is there any way I can get a 6 and a 2 add up to be a negative 1? No, there's not. So what's my other choice? Right, 3 and 4. Okay. Now, they have to add up to be negative 1, so it matters which one is positive, which one is negative. So which one is it going to be? Negative 4 and what? It's positive 3. Everybody see that? So this is what's going on in your head. If you want... Write them down. Right, 12 times 1. Right, 6 times 2. Right, 4 times 3. And then you can put the signs in there. And you say, which one is going to add up to a negative 1? Well, definitely not this one. Definitely not this one. So let's figure out this one. Which one's positive, which one's negative? Has to add up to be a negative, so that's going to be a negative. So all this, again, can be going, that's all in your head. right? Or you can write it down. If you want to jot it down, feel free to jot it down. Okay? So where do we, what do we put right here with the plus? That's the 3, right? Because the 3 is the positive. Which one was the negative? The 4, and there you go. If you wanted to check it, you could. You could do the FOIL method and check it. x squared minus 4x plus 3x is negative 1x, and then negative 12. Yep, it works. I can check that in my head. Or you could write it down if you wanted to. And that would be your answer right there. Okay? Stop me. Yeah, go ahead, Josh. It wouldn't make any difference. You're absolutely right. Because A times B is the same thing as B times A. Would you agree? Yes. Yeah, so it doesn't matter what order you put it in. Um, but you do have to have the negative with a 4, though. Okay, And you do have to have the positive with a 3. But yeah, you could put X minus 4 first and X plus 3 second. It's perfectly fine. Okay, There's really... I have no... Um, I don't care which way you do it. I have no favorites on that. All right. Uh, let's see. Let's do another one. It's same numbers, but the signs are a little different. That's a plus 4x minus 12. Let's factor that one. Go ahead and do it right now. I'll give you 30 seconds. Ready? Go. That's a plus. It's kind of ugly. All right, so factor this. All right, 30 seconds is up. Did you get it, Cameron? Okay, so let's put, let's put the parentheses. And let's do the signs first, okay? They multiply to be negative, so one's going to be positive, one's going to be negative. And again, it doesn't matter if you put the positive first or the negative first. Let's put the x's. And you said, what, 6 and 2? All right, so which one, and it matters, which one is the 6? 6 is negative? Because it has to add up to be a positive. So the bigger number has to be the positive. So the 6 has to be the positive, And then the 2 has to be the negative. Again, what do they do? They multiply to be negative 12. And they add up to be positive 4. So you just... Um, they're really not... Well, here's one that's a little bit different. Right. You're right and you're right. And you, you should be to a point with problems like this. 
you should be able to just look at it and write it down, absolutely. And on a quiz or a test, I'll allow that. You don't have to show your work. I'm not going to you know, write on your paper, show your work on this, because really you can just do this in your head, go from here to here. It's not really a whole lot of steps, any steps you can show. All right. So here's another one. It's a little bit different. We kind of talked about this a little bit yesterday. There it is. Now, this is not a trinomial, but you could actually make it into a trinomial. Do you remember what the trinomial is? It's AX squared plus what? BX plus C. Now, our A is a 1, so do we really even need to put that number there? Probably not. So we need to make this look like this, but it's missing something. What's it missing? The BX, the X term, right? But I could write it with an X term if I wanted to. Couldn't I? So, let's do it. X squared plus what? No. It's got to equal this. This doesn't have a 14X in it. But what if I put a 0X? Remember we did that with that long division? We kind of put in that place value. Is that the same exact thing? Is this the same exact thing as this? Yeah, absolutely. All right. I just stuck a zero in there, plus zero. If you add zero to anything, do you, do you change the value of it? No, not at all. All right, so now what we have to do, this is kind of like a little trick question, I'll warn you. We have to figure out what, and they're both positive, so I'll put both positive. We've got to figure out what times what is equal to nine, okay, and they're both positive, okay? So something times something equals nine, and they add up to be a zero. Are there any numbers that work. Well, what do you got? You got 9 times 1 and you got 3 times 3. 9, 9 plus 1 is 10. That's not 0. 3 plus 3 is 6. That's not a 0. So are there any numbers that multiply together to be 9 and add up to be 0? Nope. Nothing. Okay. Nothing. So can you factor this? No. Okay, so this is already factored. You can't factor it any further. Okay, um, some people might look at this and say, oh, it's a sum of two squares. Well, we don't have a sum of two squares. Remember that yesterday? Somebody asked that question. Um, there's no sum of two squares. So you cannot factor this. So they say, they use the word prime. All right, so we say that the only thing this is, because it's only x squared plus 9 times 1. That's the only thing multiplied together to get this. So we call it prime, all right? And that's what they do. So every once in a while, they'll throw one of those in there and you can't factor it. I've had kids didn't know anything about factoring. Well, they should have because they should have listened to all my lessons. But anyway, I, I had a kid one time on a quiz or a test. Every time he saw a factor problem, he would put prime, 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 prime because he didn't know how to factor. And he figured, well, at least there's going to be one or two that are prime. So I'll just write prime and um, maybe I'll get at least one of them right. Well, you know, maybe he did get one right, but he got all the rest wrong. So I don't even know if it was a he or a she. But I remember somebody doing that, and I just thought, well, good try. But if I, if I give you one that's pr on a test or a quiz, I'll probably only give you like one. Okay, I probably won't give you any more than that, if I even give you one that's prime. And I believe that's it. Yep. It's a short class today, so I'm going to stop there. So let's put your homework up here. And um, this is section R5, part two. So what you're turning in today is part one. This is part two. Make sure you write that on your homework. Okay, section R5, part two. Make sure that's on your homework. And it is page 56. And it is 39 to 49 odd. So there's not that many. This is super easy. You should be able to do this in five minutes, literally. Okay. There it is right there. So should be easy problems, and I don't even give you very many problems. What's that, like six problems right there? Okay, so you should be able to do that very, very quickly. And that is your homework assignments. And we'll do some more on Monday.